There are so many creative voices out there. There are so many untold stories and different writing styles to be explored. There are just too many of us for this to keep going on. The Black Fantasy Man. Welcome everyone to yet another video on the channel. Quick disclaimer, this may come across to some of you as a bit of a rant. It is not. I may get a little impassioned, but just also what I'm about to say next is not directed at any specific order. Otter. Is not directed at any specific author or creator or indie specifically. I am simply speaking in I don't even want to say general terms, but I, I can't think of another word. So general terms based on certain things that I have seen that are becoming... Well, I won't even say becoming because they were prominent at one time and they've just, as things have gotten more saturated, it's just kind of gotten worse. So yeah. And more often than not, these things that I'm about to talk about aren't done with intent or on purpose. They're largely just mistakes or done through lack of understanding, which again is not poo-pooing on those who do them. It's simply something that we have to bring to the table as indie authors, get out there, discuss, and grow from. So if I step on anybody's corn, boil it, put some butter on it, salt it up, crunch. But before I get into them, Real quick, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future videos and fun things I'm doing because we've always got something coming down the pipeline. Check out some of my other videos for reference. <laughs> my fellow indie authors, some of you guys are doing things that are hurting not only yourselves, but other fellow indies. And again, I'm not ascribing a tint, so please, don't take that from the video. But, do you guys ever stop to consider why so many people don't want to buy indie author books? Aside from the biases, we all know that the biases exist. Like the you're not the professional guy, why should I spend my money and you don't you weren't published by Random House or Penguin or something? You're not Madeline Lingle, you're not George R. R. Martin, whatever. Why should I waste my money on you? Okay, we're not talking about those biases that people have. So laying that aside, why else do you think that people don't want to buy indie works, or at least reluctant to buy indie books, hmm? There are some problems going on in the field. Lazy editing is a big one, okay? Back in the day, it was, it was a little harder to get a hold of an editor. When, you know, indie publishing was just really, really starting to take the internet by storm because it's largely an internet uh, realm. But just back when it was largely just starting to take the internet by storm, you know, it was a little harder to find editors and those that you could find, you had to have steep pockets to use them more often than not. But today, as accessible as things are, as accessible as people's services are, you can find editors for a fraction, and I do mean a fraction, of what people were paying back in those days I'm talking about. There are so many freelance sites and people that aren't even on freelance sites but are visiting author forums and whatnot that offer editing services for very reasonable prices and they do a good job. Of course, as with everything, you use caution and you vet your people. But I'm bringing this up to say that there is no longer any excuse for indie books to be full of mistakes. Guys! There should not be typos all throughout your book, beginning, middle, and end. It just should not be anymore. We have to be able to move past this by now. Numerous times, I'm going through uh, Amazon, because that's where I get my indie books. I'm going through Amazon, and I'm, I assemble books before I read them, because I don't just, oh, I'm judging a book by its cover, and that's the only thing I'll read, even though um, a good cover has a lot to do with things. More on that in a moment. But I look at the samples of these books, and... Within the first three pages, I'm looking at errors, not an error, okay? Errors, multiple errors. Now, I've covered this, at least in part, on another video on the channel. You can go watch that if you want. I'll probably put a card up here. Guys, this is a huge turnoff to readers, potential buyers, okay? I'm looking at your books, and I'm an indie. I'm a fellow laborer. And I'm looking at these books and they're full of mistakes and I'm thinking, I can't put in $5 on this ebook. 
that's that's it, it looks like it hasn't been edited almost some are really bad some are not so bad okay and some are forgivable some are not forgivable in this day and age with everything as accessible as it is with editors lining the block you could get lost in just how many freelance editors are out there waiting to edit your your work for uh very reasonable prices. There is no excuse for this. If that turns me off that much and I want my fellow indies to succeed, think about how much it turns off a reader who has no invested interest in seeing you succeed. They're just there to be entertained or transported to another world or spoken to deeply in some manner. And how are you going to do either of those things, any of those things? You see that? How are you going to do any of those things when your book is riddled with mistakes, spelling errors, typos, blah, blah, blah. And for quick clarification, just in case anyone, meh, I'm not talking about the occasional error that might slip through, okay? There are occasional errors that slip through in big six publishing books all the time. So I'm not talking about that. I don't expect your work to be absolutely, completely, positively error-free. That's not what I'm asking, and that's not what readers are asking either. They just want something that looks like, okay, yeah, the, I can tell the author put some work into this. They had some pride in this. And that's not too much to ask if you ask me. And then on kind of the other side of the coin, or maybe further down the page would be a better analogy, when the book is very well edited, but the story is just, I don't even want to use this term, but copy and pasted indies mabrudas please do not simply copy other people's stories ah here come the pitchforks i am not pointing fingers at specific people or stories and yes sometimes your stories will intersect but i know that plenty of you guys out there have come across certain tales that are just this is ripped straight from the pages of the book i read last week or three months ago, or that's hitting the top of the charts right now. Find your creative voice and stick to that. A good way to do that is to find books, stories, writing styles that you love, that really resonate with you, absorb them, and then turn them by reason of your own experiences, specifically life experiences and or educational experiences, which is part life experience anyway, but you get what I'm trying to say. So you take the Secrets of Droon series by Tony Abbott, one of my top favorite series of all time. You take that and you take the kind of silly way he presented creatures, magical creatures, magic in general, and stories and fairy tales, and then you make it a little more profound, you heavy it up a bit, you butter the prose up to fit what you're trying to say, you make the books longer into, your, into a proper novel, and that's what you do. But you don't copy. You don't read a book about a blue dragon called Zephira, then go and write your book about a blue wyvern called Samira. It sounds harsh, but you guys are fully aware of the, the situation that I'm talking about. Indies, it's got to stop. There are so many creative voices out there. There are so many untold stories and different writing styles to be explored. There are just too many of us for this to keep going on. And I know market saturation has a lot to do with it, and sometimes you come up with a story first, and then someone else comes up two, three months later with the same kind of story, but they have no idea that you exist, and now you got that, and they then, ah! That's not what I'm talking about. Those are simply unfortunate incidents that we have no control over. But that is not all of them. Indie authors. Be original use. And as important as all of this is that I just mentioned, don't forget, it all has to be packaged oh so nicely. I'm talking about covers. Now this, for me personally, is uh, a lot more of a pet peeve than I think it is for other people, but I could be mistaken. It does not draw me when I can flip through different books on Amazon or wherever the case may be, and I can see that a book cover was either hastily put together, put together with no experience, or put together without love and care. There are plenty of graphic artists, illustrators, whatever the case may be, all over. These can sometimes tend to be pricier than editors. That is what it is. But it is highly important. The very first thing that readers see is your cover. If it's 
if it's not that good. Then they have no reason to believe that the book will be. And there are plenty of indies that, I'm sorry to say, just throw a cover together hastily from a few random stock photos that they found, barely touch them up, too many elements, and they slap some text on it and there's a book cover. You know what that does? That perpetuates the stereotype of, oh yeah, that's an indie book. <laughs> yeah, it's got an indie cover. People who aren't indies say that all the time. You guys know what I'm talking about. Again, indies, we are too creative. There are too many of us. Some of us wear many hats. Some of us are illustrators as well as authors. There are some, some of us that can do that. But if we just strive to be as original and then be as thorough and meticulous in the presentation of our originality as we can be, if we treat it like we would treat, you know, our jobs that we work in the daytime or our, our, our family life interactions, if we treated it as seriously as that, then it would show in the work. Sometimes we don't have access to certain things that other people have access to. That's fine. Work with what you've got. Just work with it well. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to say for you guys in this one. No attacks, no specific finger pointing at any specific authors. Just for us indies, man, we can do better. Until the next video.